Running like we on Capitol Hill, yeah. yeah. Swallowing yeah. parties, their presidents, yeah, we feeling that. The music of evolution, and we're feeling cracks. As we sit on Capitol uh, Hill, uh, killing tracks. Witness yesterday was not dissent, it was not disorder, it was not protest, it was chaos. Don't dare call them protesters. They were a riotous mob, insurrectionists, domestic terrorists. President-elect Joe Biden denouncing the perpetrators of yesterday's attacks on the Capitol, the most heinous in modern history, directly pointing the finger at President Donald Trump as the architect of the anarchy. I wish we could say we couldn't see it coming, but that isn't true. The past four years, we've had a president who's made his contempt for our democracy, our constitution, the rule of law, clear in everything he has done. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. With Biden's victory now certified, in less than two weeks before leaving office, President Trump this evening finally acknowledging his presidency is ending. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. The video was posted to his recently unfrozen Twitter account. The president had been blocked after posting a video that did not condemn the Capitol Hill riots and continue to perpetuate his lies. But his megaphone isn't completely turned back on. Facebook announcing it will continue blocking President Trump's account, including Instagram, for at least through the end of his term, and potentially indefinitely. But he's still the president of the United States. He's got massive power. And of course, he's the commander in chief. He still has somebody who follows him around with the nuclear codes. Democrats and even a few Republicans today calling for the immediate removal of the president. A very dangerous person who should not continue in office. This is urgent. This is emergency of the highest magnitude. The president is unfit and the president is unwell. And the president must now relinquish control of the executive branch voluntarily or involuntarily. Soon to be Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer asking Vice President Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. He may have only 13 days left as president, but yesterday demonstrated that each and every one of those days is a threat to democracy so long as he is in power. The most practical thing uh, that is likely to happen is simply trying to box the president in, dealing with the vice president as if he were the acting president. He doesn't actually have that authority, but this would be an effort to try to just keep the president isolated and unable to do any more damage. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi threatening a second impeachment if Pence does not comply. My phone is exploding with impeach, impeach, impeach. The president must be held accountable again. The Washington, D.C. Police Department has made 80 arrests so far. A white boy with a lighter sheet of brown. Trump building versus you can't go around. A day gun because I bring that thunder sound. Like Thor's fist, but I'm more quick. Like me like cocaine and I'm fucking pissed. Hold up, I gotta live another way Having so much fun, I never wanna change Identify some of these individuals ABC News separately identifying several of the individuals inside the Capitol Including Richard Barnett from Arkansas The man photographed with his feet on Speaker Pelosi's desk There was also Jake Angeli, seen at the President's rally earlier this week Who appears to have posted several videos about the baseless QAnon conspiracy theory Tim G a.k.a. Baked Alaska, a well-known right-wing personality who live-streamed himself storming the Capitol. And Adam Johnson from Florida, seen here carrying off Speaker Pelosi's podium. Critics are now questioning why, despite repeated early warning signs on social media and on right-wing websites, and even a tweet from President Trump in mid-December saying, in part, big protest in D.C. on January 6th, be there, will be wild. I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. You'll never 
take back our country with weakness. How there could be such a shockingly small police presence. There should have been a massive police presence from all levels of government. And now we know that uh, the failure was real. And I think it's a, a, a black eye for uh, our nation, it's something that won't soon be forgotten. Some were questioning the actions of the Capitol Hill police officers who were there after videos posted on social media appeared to show officers moving barricades aside. Oh, there we go. Another one posing for a selfie. Obviously, it was a failure, um, or you would not have had police lines breached. Authorities say they recovered 11 Molotov cocktails, a military assault rifle, and two potentially lethal pipe bombs near the Republican and Democratic National Committee headquarters. Anyone that considers considers himself a patriotic American that's not speaking out, you take a hard look in the mirror uh, because I promise you that you're not a patriot unless you stand up. The 80 arrests that the D.C. Metropolitan Police made yesterday is just a fraction of the arrests made during the Black Lives Matter protest last summer, where on one night they made 289 arrests. We must also understand why the federal law enforcement response was much stronger at the protest over the summer than during yesterday's attack on Congress. Over the summer, we watched as law enforcement came out in full force. We saw military helicopters flying low. We saw tear gas and pepper balls deployed on peaceful demonstrators. We saw them being forcibly pushed back in order to clear a path for President Trump to take a photo op at St. John's Church. You may remember him holding up that Bible. These were just two completely different scenes. After covering both, my big question was, what would have happened here at the U.S. Capitol if those rioters would have been black. The events of yesterday and the police response, yet another stark reminder of deep racial wounds the nation still carries. No one can tell me that if it had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. We all, we all know that's true. And it is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. Earlier this evening, I spoke with former Republican governor of New Jersey and ABC News contributor Chris Christie. Good evening, Governor. First question, what's your reaction to President Trump's video this evening? And is this the kind of tone that could have prevented what happened yesterday? Sure, it, it, especially if he had done that on the Saturday after the election, uh, when the election was, was called for President-elect Biden. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we expect from presidents and, and, and the kind of thing that all of us who have been friends with the president for years were hoping for. Um, I think doing it, you know, eight weeks later, um, you know, is, is too little too late. Today, all the talk is about the 25th Amendment and removing the president from office. Is this viable, you think? I don't think so, Byron. I, I don't think either of the removal procedures is viable because we're at 12 days left in, in the job. So whether it's the 25th Amendment, which has an appeal process built within it, even if you could convince the vice president and half the cabinet to sign off, the president can still appeal it to both houses of Congress. And then obviously impeachment has to go through the House and the Senate. So none of those things would happen in 12 days. What are you hearing from your fellow Republicans, people who've stood by the president and many would say have been enabling him? What are they saying now? They're through. I mean, in the, in the mainstream of the party and the people that I've spoken to, they're, they're fed up and they've had enough. And I think Lindsey Graham put it really well last night. And you know, Lindsey has been as big a supporter of the president's as anybody probably in the United States Senate. And he said, enough is enough. I've had it. This is a, a personal one. And for the sake of full disclosure, I'm going to make it clear, I consider you a friend. You're someone who I both respect and admire. But as someone who has given President Trump counsel before, when you're giving yourself a shave this morning, did you find yourself wondering what more could you have done? Any, any soul searching that you've been going through these last 24 hours or so about what you might have done in, in the days, weeks, months, years leading up to this moment? The answer to that, Byron, is yes and no. The soul searching for me is about what do, what do I do from here to try to help heal the country and unite our party um, behind the ideas that we believe in and to be able to make this a part of our past. The no part is I've known Donald Trump for 20 years. 
and I've given him lots of advice over time, and some of it he's taken, but a lot of it he hasn't. And I know that in the mood that he's been in in the last eight weeks, he was not listening to anyone. And so I, I wasn't thinking yesterday, gosh, could I have done something differently? All I wanted to do when I tried to call him yesterday was to give him a sense of urgency of how bad this was, how bad it was for the country, how bad it looked around the world, and that he needed to step up. But obviously, um, in the end, all of this is up to the man who looks in the mirror himself. Uh, and Donald Trump has to look in that mirror and think about exactly what he wrought yesterday. Chris Christie, thank you so much. I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Byron.